Hello and welcome to VCC TV. I have with me a very special guest today, Shrikant Nathamuni, the CEO of Kosla Labs. Shrikant, you built Aadhaar in India. How was the entire experience? And doing something like that must have been a huge challenging task. Can you perhaps take us through the ups and downs of building Aadhaar in India? Trying to cover a billion people is uh, difficult. Uh, so the technology that we had, to, the technology platform that we had to build, um, was something that was quite challenging. Uh, we had to ensure that people were indeed unique, meaning one person could not get multiple IDs, mm -hmm. and uh, we could only do that using biometric technology. We could not do that using names and addresses and things like that. So. These are advanced, sort of uh, sophisticated technologies, uh, and of course, it has to scale to a very large extent uh, when we do the deduplication to ensure uniqueness. Uh, so, for instance, today we do about uh, 300 trillion biometric matches every day mm -hmm. to issue a million others. So, it was quite a challenge to build that platform that could scale to that level. And of course, it didn't scale, you know, sort of gracefully just because it was a great design from day one. We've had to make, you know, modifications and changes as we went along. So there were several challenges in uh, getting uh, the system to work. How do you think technology startups can leverage the Aadhaar platform to build out great technology products? Uh, yes, the Aadhaar uh, system was deliberately built as a identity platform yeah. as opposed to a end-user application so that various government departments and private companies, whether they're banks and insurance companies and so on and so forth, telecom operators and so on, could build their own apps, right? Uh, so I think there's a, a huge opportunity for startups to actually build these apps and they might find the government or other industries, the finance industry or the mobile industry as customers for these apps. So uh, there are a lot of opportunities. Some examples that I can give you are, um, you know, in, in banking, mobile payments, for instance. Uh, Aadhaar came up with uh, uh, something called the micro ATM, a specification of a device called the micro ATM, which does pretty much all the things that ATMs do, but in an assisted mode, so that in a village, uh, you know, an owner of a Kirana shop she could become the banker of the village using this device. Mm -hmm. And what is new about it and how does it suddenly start working? Earlier it wouldn't uh, you know, work at a village. It's because it is the authentication platform, the identity and authentication platform of Aadhaar coupled with the mobile networks that are available. Between the two, we can get this ATM device to actually go to the village and you can have a small mom and pop store, the Kirana shop, and she can become the banker of the village. Sure. So that's an example of uh, a solution, if you will. And so they can, you know, startups can help in building those devices, building micro ATM apps, building layered services on top of that. <coughs> there are several government requirements. The direct cash transfer program that the government is talking about. You need to ensure that the NREGA payments get to the right people. Right, and it gets delivered at the village. So there could be apps that help do that. There are many, many examples. The LPG gas cylinder, the government is talking about doing a direct cash transfer as opposed to a subsidy in kind because it's easier to manage that and ensure that you know it's working well. Uh, so there can be apps around that. There can be apps on KYC. To open a bank account, you, you, there is the know your customer norms. When you get a, a SIM card from a telecom operator, you have to, uh, you know, comply with KYC norms. So now Aadhaar is accepted as uh, KYC for both the banking sector as well as the telecom sector. So using the eKYC APIs, people can build apps on top of that to help these sectors. So there are several examples uh, already people are trying out. And I think there are lots that we don't know of yet. These startups, you know, out here in this room, they're probably going to come up with new and amazing ideas that we can't dream of today. What exactly do you think is a problem that Aadhaar has solved in India? You and I don't have a problem of identity. We have probably half a dozen cards in our wallets which prove who we are. 
we can pro perhaps walk into an ATM and you know uh, take money that we need. Whereas a lot of the poor, whether they are in rural areas or urban areas, don't have these conveniences, and they need them. It's not as though they don't need these things. Uh, so when a farmer, let's say in Bihar, moves to Delhi to be a taxi driver, okay, his ration card from that village in Bihar doesn't work in Delhi anymore. So that 2, K, two rupees kg of rice is not available to him and perhaps he can't afford anything uh, more, right? So the identity becomes important, but that identity has to be portable and online so that whether he goes, goes to Delhi or to Bombay or to Bangalore or to Chennai or to whichever place, he's able to access those benefits of the government. It can't be that, okay, you can only, you have to stay there in that village to access your benefits because only that village recognizes you. The government of India needs to recognize you. The different states have to recognize you. Okay, and the promise kept by the, the government, I mean the promise that's made to the, uh, that person with respect to whatever the benefit scheme is, need to be honored uh, wherever he goes. Interesting. Right, so, uh, and unfortunately, uh, many people don't have this form of identity. Okay, mo I mean, mo mo most uh, people will not have this mobile form of identity which they can carry around wherever, wherever the, their job, uh, you know, uh, wherever, wherever they can get a job and, you know, it, should, it needs to work. Mm -hmm. And so Aadhaar is really that kind of a solution which brings identity in the hands of people and it's a mobile identity and it's online identity that can be checked right there in real time using mobile networks. When you take such a huge and massive project, you know, you have insight, you have nervousness, and you also have a plan that you sort of comply with. You know, how is that your experience like building out Aadhaan for a country like ours, you know, it's chaotic, you know, you have so many government interventions from time to time, and then nothing really works with the plan. So perhaps could you just sort of tell us more about that? I think it will be interesting for like, technology entrepreneurs, when sort of they take on a project and big companies and ideas, what have been the high points in the low points of building Aadhaar? The way we try to deal with the issue of complexity uh, is uh, firstly we recognized that this was an ecosystem play. This was not about setting up an agency called Aadhaar that would go and pretty much enroll everybody in the country. Not possible. India is just too diverse. There's literate, illiterate, there's the rich and the poor, there's urban and rural, there's too many divides. Uh, which are, you know, which are diversity in some sense. And there's also a challenge in the infrastructure. Our villages don't have, you know, fiber optic uh, broadband uh, speeds which we can use to move our enrollment packets and so on. So in some sense, it is a challenging proposition to issue others to a billion people in this complex, diverse environment. So the first thing that we realized was it's an ecosystem play. That means we need registrars who are state governments, who are banks, who are insurance companies, who are NSDL and other, uh, you know, depositories and so on. And then we need enrolling agencies that will enroll people on the ground. Okay. We need operators who are trained. We need certification agencies. We need vendors who make devices. We need, uh, you know, the, the postal department which can deliver le other letters. We need printers who will print. So it, we, we constructed an ecosystem of partners vendors, you know, government agencies, private companies, and so on. So that was, I think, if you ask me, the single most important thing that Aadhaar did to ensure that the project can actually move smoothly. Uh, and the second thing that we did, when you have a large number of partners, what comes into question is the quality. Will all the partners abide by a certain minimum standard right and if they are talking through papers and books and so on will it even work right so we use technology so the technology backbone of Aadhaar plugged in all these various ecosystem partners today if the let's say we are in Bangalore today if the government of Karnataka wants to know how many Aadhaars were given in Karnataka they go to their Aadhaar portal their own Aadhaar portal and they figure out exactly how many others were issued, which enrolling agencies uh, enrolled how many people, and what is the quality of those enrollments. All of that is available in their portal. Whereas one of the enrolling agencies that worked for, let's say, the government of Karnataka can log into their own portal 
to figure out how that enrolling agency performed, who are the best operators in that company, and so on. So we have had to build technology bridges to ensure that each of these partners really can perform their job and can connect up with the other system seamlessly. Taking the conversation to Khosla Labs now, which you founded about four and a half months back, how has that been coming along and what is the game plan out there? We are at a very interesting point in India at this time. Um, there's lots of youngsters who have great ideas and no more do they want the government job or even the big company job. They're basically saying, we will create companies, we have ideas, and we will solve problems. So I think that mindset is probably the most important change that I think is really, really important to solve the problems. And uh, that's one thing that I'm seeing on a, on a daily basis as people and companies come and meet with us saying we're trying this and we're trying that. And the other interesting thing that I've seen is, you know, for instance, people always talk about the Silicon Valley when they talk about startups, startup ecosystem and so on, a very fertile ecosystem for creating startups. You know, there, the sandbox, how the startups play is well defined. Perhaps since we are still in the early stages, I still am amazed at the sudden sort of ideas that come up here from the left field where it's like how did that guy even think about that because he comes from a small town he's not he doesn't have borders around how to do startups so they come up with amazing ideas so uh, i'm still blown away you know uh, every so often when i meet these youngsters and you know entrepreneurs who come and say you know here's what i want to do here's you know uh, how i want to go about it what we are trying to do in in that uh, ecosystem to play a um, you know, constructive part is to see if we can take some ideas and we can develop some of them and market validate them and you know when those get some traction maybe fund them <coughs> with the help of course La Ventures and uh, help these companies become you know uh, valuable businesses and that's sort of what we're trying to do. If you were to give me the USP about Costa Labs vis-a-vis -vis other accelerators and incubators in the country, what would that be? You know, we're, we're experimenting. The lab is the keyword, right? So we're experimenting with ideas. A lot of the people, uh, you know, that we've hired and we're working with us, entrepreneurs and residents and developers and so on, are all practitioners. They are people who are excited about creating and developing things. And so it's a very uh, creative uh, and a lab environment where we're putting things together and we're experimenting and testing, uh, sometimes going to the ground and seeing if those things make sense and so on. Uh, I don't know how similar or different it is uh, compared to other uh, incubators and accelerators, uh, but that's what we're trying to do. And we're pretty new at this game. So, you know, we can't profess any expertise in this. Uh, we're hoping to, uh, through this process of building and testing and market validating, uh, we're hoping to come up with a model that uh, sort of uh, works and we can help startups uh, build sustainable businesses. We are not looking at a particular number of startups uh, that we're looking at. Uh, we are, like I said, we're in very early stages and so we're still trying to uh, understand how to do this. Uh, but we are having a great time with... Uh, the you know sort of the ideas that we're tossing around and people that we're meeting and uh, so it's still fairly early in the game. How do you plan to expand the team? There's probably about you know eight or ten people right now. Uh, we have a few entrepreneurs and residents, few principal architects, few developers, uh, and so on. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's pretty much the team. You must be meeting up with a lot of technology entrepreneurs as part of Kosla Labs and your interactions. If there were like two or three things that you want to perhaps advise them to improvise upon, what would those be? Firstly, I would say solve problems that are obvious to you, which are India problems, because that's what is obvious to a lot of us, because we are faced with them, right? Um, don't focus too much on what's happening elsewhere and trying to see if we can do the similar thing that's happening in the Bay Area or, I don't know, Europe or wherever else, right? 
a uh, couple of reasons. One is we are far away from that customer, so our understanding of that customer is not as good. Secondly, we need problems to be solved here. So uh, in, in some sense, I, I think uh, when people focus on solving problems that are obvious and near at hand, you're going to do a better job, right? Uh, is there a market? I think so. I mean, India is a large country and fairly large middle class. Uh, will people pay? I see people pay for services all the time, including the poor. Okay, not just the rich and the middle class. So I think there are opportunities out there. There are companies like Flipkart and Redbus and others who have proven that people will pay for services, right? So I would say that, that firstly. Secondly, uh, you need to pay attention to product design. You need to pay attention to design, period, okay? And that's probably not something that we've had large number of role models in the past because largely the IT industry in India has been service oriented. So I think there's a little bit of learning out there in that uh, space. But I think it's important to focus on product design and build solid products, right? Um, and, you know, basically understand what the real need is. Go after the customer's need and, you know, fail fast. Keep trying little ideas and taking it to the ground and when they fail, try, uh, uh, you know, newer ideas. And eventually you're going to hit upon something that actually works. Thank you.